Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast. I'm your host Dr. Harshita and today we are honored to have Dr. Pooja Nandwani Patel, an esteemed professional in the field of radiation oncology. Dr. Pooja completed her MD in radiation oncology from the Gujarat Cancer and Research Institute. She is currently the senior consultant and head of the radiation oncology department at Sterling Cancer Hospital, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Her commitment to excellence has been acknowledged through various fellowships and awards. She is a gold medalist and has received the prestigious Parvati Devi Gold Medal, TB Patel Gold Medal and TB Patel Silver Medal. She also has received the most promising young oncologist from the Indian Cancer Society in 2012. Today, Dr. Pooja will unravel the mystery surrounding radiation therapy and enlighten us on the advances in radiation oncology treatment. Welcome, Dr. Pooja. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Dr. Harshita. It's a pleasure to be here on this platform today. Uh, being a clinician, it's our in and out job to treat uh, patients. But uh, having been on this type of platform where we can share some views about the cancer treatment and help for awareness, uh, I'm really, very really glad to be here for this call today. Thank you, Dr. Pooja, and welcome once again. And uh, before we begin, Dr. Pooja, could you share your clinical journey and experience so far? So, Harshita, as you mentioned, I did my residency in 2005 and it's been almost two decades now. And uh, the, the oncology field has gone leaps and bounds in the last three, four decades where the, advance, where the advances have become so huge so as to give more better patient outcomes and at the same time help patient come back to a normal quality of life as before. Yeah, that's great Dr. Pooja and uh, now let's start with the basics. Cancer is a term we often hear and its understanding might vary. Could you provide our listeners with a concise overview of what cancer is? So Harshita, basically our body is made up of uh, millions of cells yeah. and these cells they have a pattern of growth and dying. But sometimes what happens is that certain cells, they lose their control uh, way of growing and dying and they keep on growing and growing and multiplying. So that is the term stare at a time when it forms a tumor. Now tumors can be in uh, two ways. It can be a benign tumor where it means that it is going to remain at the same place and not going to disturb the other organs. It is not going to be life threatening. So uh, it's a usual call whether to uh, remove that tumor or not. Like you would have heard that people sometimes they have a tumor of the fat cells which is very common in this lipoma and it will stay there for years and years and not disturb anything. But the cancer is a term where it is going, growing and multiplying and it spreads to the nearby areas very uh, fast. It can be life threatening also and that is the time when we need to address it and go for the correct treatment. So I would say cancer where the cell is growing and multiplying without any control on that. Yeah, thank you for clarifying the fundamentals, Dr. Pooja. And now let's delve a bit deeper into the treatment aspect. So, um, cancer treatment comes in various forms. So, could you shed light on different modalities available and specifically elaborate on what radiation treatment entails? So, Harshita, uh, when we talk about the scientific treatment for this disease, there are primarily three important treatments. The first is surgery, which people understand a little easier because it's a term which is very common uh, amongst us. It's basically the removal of the tumor. The surgery has also got a lot of uh, advances in the last three, four decades, where initially starting from the open surgeries to the era of laparoscopic surgeries, and now we are in the era where we are doing robotic surgeries also. This really helps us for be better uh, surgery better precision in surgery and at the same time faster recovery and better compliance from the patient side. The second uh, important modality is chemotherapy where in a simple language if I say it's a treatment with some injections or uh, tablet formats and just the treatment in simple ways as a some sort of poisonous drugs being given and that also causes the cell kill. Even in chemotherapy there have been a lot of advances where today we are in the era of uh, giving targeted uh, chemotherapy drugs uh, immunotherapies which really helps for better control rates and at the same time lesser side effects. And third is my field that is radiation oncology where we are using high energy x-rays. So Harshita, this is basically the same x-rays which we are using in the diagnosis also of the x-rays or the CT scan but there the voltage is less so it is primarily used for the diagnosis part you get a black and white picture but here in our field the x-rays are higher in voltage so it causes the cell kill. So, uh, radiotherapy is basically the treatment of these tumorous cells with the help of high energy x-rays. 
And Dr. Pooja, uh, in what stage is radiation treatment given? So, Dr. Harshita, I would address uh, this question in a different way. Rather than uh, thinking that which stage has been given, it is better to understand how, with what intent, we are trying to give radiation. So, uh, I will give examples so it will make the understanding more clear. So, sometimes uh, we intend to treat the tumor entirely with radiation therapy. So, here the radiation is given with a definitive intent to cure the disease, which is called as definitive radiation or curative radiation. So, many of the early voice box cancers, early vocal cord cancers, cervical cancers, prostate tumor, these are only, these are curable with radiation itself. So, you would not need any other uh, important modality, definitive uh, local therapy like a surgery. Uh, this therapy goes for a longer period of time, say for example from 4 to 6 or 7 weeks. Sometimes we, the major uh, part of the treatment, the major definitive therapy is the surgery only. Like for example breast cancers or oral, oral tongue cancers. Here the surgery is the definitive treatment but then after uh, the surgery has been done, when we see the histopatho report, we realize that the tumor is a little bit aggressive. It has a tendency to come back again. So, to prevent the disease coming back when we give radiation, that intention is called as post-operative radiation or adjuvant radiation. It may go from 3 to 5 or 6 weeks. The third indication is the definitive treatment is still going to be surgery only, but we are uh, using radiation before the surgery, the pre-operative uh, setting to downstage the disease so that the surgery uh, also becomes a little bit comfortable for the surgeon to operate on. And we have realized in certain tumors giving upfront uh, radiation and then followed by surgery has helped in patients' complications also going down and uh, the results also bet getting better. For example, cancers of the esophagus, the food pipe or the rectal tumors. And fourth is the indication where with any modality you use, whether surgery, chemo or radiation, you are not going to cure the disease completely. But there are certain uh, symptoms of the patient which are disturbing like pain, bleeding, uh, where the disease has gone to the brain, the brain mass it causes headache, vomiting or disturbances in walking or muscle weakness. So at that junction when we give radiation, it is only with the intention for symptom release. It's a shorter period of uh, treatment for one or two weeks. So it is with the intent we decide when to give radiation in the curative setting or post-operative or a pre-operative or a palliative setting. And Dr. Pooja, how are radiation therapies administered and could you share some common questions that patients often have in clinical practice? Wonderful. So, Dr. Hashita, this is a very common question, you know, when you say the patient comes to my OPD and says that I have been referred to for radiation, the first question is, Doctor, is this therapy going to be very painful? So, uh, we have to understand that radiation, uh, as I mentioned, is an excess, high energy excess, but practically you don't feel anything about it. So, it is uh, no feeling at all. It is nothing as, getting, as if getting burnt or, you know, painful or pain breaking. It is no feeling at all. Uh, the very second question, common question people have is that, you know, it is going uh, to be a little bit uh, uh, dangerous to the others in the family around or in the friends around. <clears throat> so, when you're on the radiation therapy and when you're out from the radiation therapy, it's like a normal person. So, you don't emit radiation to somebody else. So, it's completely safe to be there in the public or in the friends or the families. Uh, the other common myth is that radiation is going to cause hair loss. So, we have to understand radiation is a local treatment. So, wherever I am going to go with radiation, the side effects are going to be at that area. For example, if I am going to give for the breast cancer, it is to the chest wall region or to the breast per se, there is no amount, there is no question of the hair being lost at the skull. So, it is a very local therapy. So, these are very common questions, you know, people usually have in their mind. Uh, regarding how it is being given, there are two important ways the radiation has been given. The first is called the external therapy, which is the majority of the times what we are being using in and out. Here, as per the name, the patient uh, is lying on a machine and the, the, the x-rays are being delivered from the uh, machine. So, the patient is going to be away from the machine. So, that is why it is called as external therapy. Majority of the times, more than 98% of the cases, we are used the external therapy only. And these machines have advanced in the last 3-4 days tremendously. The other uh, modality is called the internal therapy or the brachytherapy, where we are putting some applicators or tubes. And then there is a radioactive source where we connect it to the... Uh, patient, the, the tubes and the applicators be connected to the radiative source and then the radiation is been delivered. But this modality of treatment, the internal therapy or the brachytherapy has very limited indication like for certain uh, cervical cancers or um, esophageal cancers, it's very limited indication. So primarily, it's two important ways, the external way and the internal therapy. 
Yes, thank you, Dr. Pooja, for providing insights into the practical aspects of radiation therapy. And uh, my next question is, is radiation therapy safe for everyone around the patient getting the radiation treatment? It's completely safe. So as I mentioned, when we when the patient enters into the radiation machine, the X-rays are coming from uh, the, the machine and they are entering the patient's one part of the body. And as in the today's era, when we have advanced machines, they are just targeting the area where they are going, giving the radiation. The nearby structures, they get as less radiation as possible. And then the radiation leaves from the patient's body, which means that the, the radiation is not going to stay in the patient's body. And that is why it is completely safe. When the patient is out from the machine, it is, it is like us. So it is no, no hazard that the patient is going to give radiation to somebody else in the family or at home. So especially when the patient asks me that, Doctor, we have kids at home or I have a pregnant lady at home or elderly, it's completely safe. You know, they can be sitting in the same room, eating from the same plate, uh, sharing the same bed, sharing the same utensils, which is completely safe. And Dr. Harshita, at this point, I would really uh, emphasize that in fact, at this uh, point when the patient is diagnosed with cancer, he or she nearly needs more emotional support and family support and friend support. So there is no point of differentiating any cancer patient from others. It's not an infectious disease. The treatment modalities are not going to damage anybody else. So it's completely safe. There's no uh, damage or there's no any harm to anybody else. So in fact, we should be very compassionate and giving a lot of uh, more mental support to the patient so that you know the patient can fight against this deadly disease more strongly. Yes, completely agree, Dr. Pooja. And educating them is really very important. So um, now, uh, Dr. Pooja, being a radiation expert, where would you not recommend radiation therapy? Very good question, you know, because uh, Dr. Hashida, I always say that it's very easy to say yes, but it's always difficult to say no. So uh, as I mentioned, sometimes uh, uh, there are certain clinical indications where in fact giving radiation would be causing harm to the patient rather than benefit. Like for example, uh, sometimes a cervical cancer or a prosthetic tumor is so advanced because you know the, the cervix is the area where in front is the bladder or at behind is the rectum. So if it is very advanced and probably giving radiation to that will make a common way between the, uh, the cervix and the bladder or the cervix or the rectum, then probably it is going to cause a scientific terminology or situation called a spatula. And it is going to make patients like more miserable. So there are certain situations where we say that radiation is not going to help. So we would try to keep our step back that no, we are not going to give radiation. Or a very simple example would be certain uh, uh, intestinal tumors. The certain intestine, they are quite movable. So I cannot get them back daily into the same position. So uh, it's only in the lower uh, rectal tumors or the lower GI tumors that the radiation has a clear role. But in upper GI tumors, probably sometimes it is not that easy to give radiation. So certain indications would be very clear that where we should not put our step and say that radiation should be given. Wonderful insights, Dr. Pooja. And now could you highlight some do's and don'ts during radiation treatment? So the first uh, thing I'm really, I already mentioned is that radiation is completely safe. So there is uh, no specific uh, do's that patient has to be you know, isolated or has to be given a different type of uh, support. But in fact, I would say that uh, the patient uh, diet should be proper. Uh, he or she should be taking good protein diet, a lot of good preparations. Uh, I always say that there is not very hard restriction that you have to take this food or you ha don't have to take this food. But if you keep your oil and spices, though it's good for the patient. Uh, as I mentioned, the very important thing to understand from radiation is it's a local treatment. It's not like chemotherapy, which is systemic. You give it through your veins and it is acting on the whole body. So locally, we have to uh, make sure that the patient at that area is keeping the things as untouched as possible. Say, for example, if it's a breast case, we advise the patient not to apply any soap or powder or any chemicals on that area so that, you know, the radiation side effects, especially the skin side effects are not seen. So you have to keep the clean, that area very clean and untouched as possible. Um, keeping good diet. Um, Following the instructions of the doctor very carefully. See, the doctor is going to help you, can make you understand, can help you uh, confu uh, get clear from your confusion and doubts. But then you have to rely on your doctor and complete the treatment as advised by the doctor so that you can have the results as what we expect from the uh, disease to happen. So if you complete the treatment on time, follow the instructions carefully as per the site which we are going to give treatment. Uh, I'm sure the radiation treatment is going to really work for you and help you 
uh, getting rid from the disease and have a better quality of life when you are free from the disease also yes dr pooja and now let's talk about a different aspect every medication or therapy has some amount of side effects so how troublesome are the side effects of radiation treatment and has advanced machines helped in decreasing them absolutely dr hashida you are very right you know when you are expecting some effect to happen side effects are bound to happen but as very correctly said uh, the machines have become advanced so you need we are talking about some era long back when it was simple 2d treatment means if i am treating my uh, head and neck area and tongue area so when i treat the tongue the parotid the spinal cord whatever is coming in the way is also going to get the same 100% dose and then there are going to be plenty of side effects but in today's era where the machines have become better defined so what we do is we do a plan on a computer and we fix up the target that this is the area we want to radiate and these are the nearby critical structures where i don't want my radiation to go so with the advanced machines the side effects has become very very less and as i said it's only the local uh, side effects we are talking about because radiation part is the local treatment so uh, with the advanced machines the side effects have gone down uh, i would not say has gone down completely to zero but definitely to that extent where the patients can comfortably treat, take the treatment and complete the treatment whichever side it is uh, the head and neck or the chest or the abdomen and uh, with this uh, side effects being going very low the patient's confidence level has also come up very high they are taking the treatment completed the treatment and the way the, the we fight with the disease we get the results also in safe way so it, it, it is today's era where we say that side effects are there but they are very less and more importantly they are temporary whatever going to happen later once the treatment is complete your side effects are going to go in two or three weeks as per whatever the area we have treated but then there are no certain side effects which we see in today's era being permanent with the patient so it has been very safe in these uh, last few decades with the advanced machines coming up okay dr pooja and uh, now uh, lastly how do you see the future of radiation treatment in the coming years so dr ashita as i said the and machines have become very advanced and what i see in uh, the future is that with more and more precise machines coming up with more and more knowledge about the biology of the tumor you know because even we keep on learning from our patients also because you know if i have 10 patients sitting in my cabin with the same disease with the same state there are certain times that two of those patients would not be behaving uh, with the same uh, response as i expect from them so you know we also keep learning from our patients so with more better uh, uh, knowledge about the patient's biology with more uh, genetics coming into picture with more other th- immunotherapies and chemotherapies and with more and more understanding of the disease and the subject and with more better advanced and precise machines i think that they will come where the therapies will become more and more uh, targeted and specific and that is why the side effects have been going very down and with the way we are working together on these type of platforms to make patient more aware and alert i think it will be the era where we will be really picking up the disease very early giving a lesser amount of treatment because it is a dead term when you have a smaller stage the treatments are also going to be less if i have a small stage i will maybe use only one therapy say surgery or radiation but if it is advanced then you will need everything you will need surgery radiation chemo so if in times when the when the people are also more aware the the diagnosis will be if you will be catching up the disease in early stage the treatment is going to be less the the side effects is going to be less and uh, yes i think it will be the era where we will see the patient's quality of life be practically as same as what they are before yes Thank you Dr Pooja for sharing your thoughts and it's inspiring to hear about the ongoing advancement in this field now as we wrap this insightful conversation i would like to express our gratitude to Dr Pooja for sharing her expertise on radiation therapy thank you Dr Pooja for joining us today thank you Ashita it's my pleasure today to be on this platform thank you and uh, to our listeners stay tuned for more enriching discussions on our upcoming episodes on this channel and if you are a healthcare professional explore medsanaps platform it's not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with esteemed medical professionals participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare until then take care and keep advancing in your medical journey goodbye